Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made these little money bags. I showed these on my blog last week, I believe it was on Saturday. Um, it was one of my week seven challenges which was um, different project using the envelope punch board. These were really very very popular and I've been asked if I would make a video which obviously I'm more than pleased to do. Um, these are the ones that I actually showed on my blog the other day. The colours are from the In Colours 2014 to 2016 and I used different um, closures on them. That one is actually a retired stamp set but the flowers the tree, which is the one I'm going to be doing today, the butterflies. Um, these in colours are for 2015 to 2017, and that's Cucumber Crush, Watermelon Wonder, Tip Top Taupe, Mint Macaroon and Delightful Dijon. So let's move that one out of the way because the glitter on it is still quite wet. Um, I think I'll do the mint macaroon. I will be making the other one, but um, not on the video. Okay, so what you need to start off with is a piece of DSP that measures 6x6. Six six. And obviously you need your envelope punch board. To start off with, what you need to do is to line up move those out a little bit. Um, I have a new setup here for making my videos as you can probably tell I've got a foot here from my tripod it's now on my desk rather than standing down by the side of me. Um, the only thing wrong at the moment is the arm that's holding my camera over the top it's not quite long enough um, which is why you can see the foot up. We're going to try and remedy that one. Anyway what you need to do six by six piece of um, DSP. I'm going to work from the other side um, because it's easier to see the score lines slightly, uh, not massively but a uh, bit easier. Line the first edge up at 2 and 5 eighths, punch and score. Turn 90 degrees, line the pointer up at your score line punch and score. If you really can't see your score line and you can either tip your board up to have a look at it or it should come up to the three and three eighths mark. So you could do it like that. So did I score? Yes I did. So let's turn that one round and again it will take you back to the two and five eighths punch and score but if you can actually see your score lines you only need to use this once and again you're back to three and three eighths punch and score I don't think I got that very well did I well it's done so that's all you're going to need the envelope punch board for I'm going to keep that because I want to show you something in a minute Right, now what you need to do is with your two small triangles pointing sideways, use your ruler and um, making these I have found that there's no clear cut way of saying exact, exact measurements, um, so bear with me. On the small triangle measure from the tip here in just a tad short of one and a quarter inches. Now make sure you're using a nice sharp pencil. If, you, if you've got a blunt um, point on there you're going to get quite a thick line and you're not going to, it's not going to be very helpful when you put that into the trimmer. So I've got this just under one and a quarter and I'm doing a small straight line. I'm going to turn it, I'm going to do the same this side. Line that 
up with the edge and mark at a tad short of one and a quarter. I'm going to do the second small triangle again, line that up one and a quarter, a tad short of one and a quarter. If you get this measurement wrong, it's better to make it so that you did one and an eighth, something smaller, rather than something bigger. Um, I'll show you why when we get to the appropriate place. Okay, so just a tad under one and a quarter again, so another straight line. That's those two done. And then on just one of the big triangles, you need to do the same thing, only this one you need to go a tad over one and a half inches. Let me just double check that. Um, one big triangle, yes, a tad over. So that's one and it's really one and nine sixteenths, but if you go for a tad over one and a half, you'll be fine. Oops. That's one and a half and a tad. Okay. So next you need to bring in your trimmer. And with the smaller triangles, you need to line that pencil mark up with the left hand side of the channel there and this one with the left hand side of the channel there just the end, the very edge where your pencil came off the paper right there, line that up, line that up now to know whether you're right or not what you should find is this triangle comes just over this line which is a two centimeter line okay so it's a tad over and also this line here which is a three centimeters you've got to have that amount of gap both sides that doesn't look too equal to me so I'm just going to move it absolute fraction again as I say if you get this measurement wrong do it so that your triangle is smaller rather than bigger Okay, and let me just give you the measurements here. If you don't have centimetres, um, in the UK we've got centimetres and inches. Um, I know in the US you deal with inches, but I don't know whether yours is marked with centimetres as well. In case you're not, where I'm referring to three, that is actually one and three sixteenths. Is that right? One, two, three, four, eight. Yes, that is one and three sixteenths of an inch that line and your two here is halfway between if that's 16 that's one two three twelve it's just over the three quarters of an inch okay that's what that two line is there so just close that knock that one off and then do the same again here line it up on the left hand side of the channel. Make sure the tip comes just over. Can you see that from where you are? Okay, so that tip comes just over that line. And on this side, you should have an equal distance from on that, between that line and the edge of your DSP. Okay, so that DSP with that line just make sure that that gap in there is about the same width. Um, I'm sorry that I can't be more precise than this, um, but as I say, if you make a mistake, do it so that these triangles that you're cutting off are smaller than what I'm saying to you. Again, do the same on the big triangle, only on this time, make your pencil mark go on the right-hand side of the channel, and if you do that for both of them, what you should find is 
that these lines here will line up beautifully on the four centimeter line which if you're working in inches only it's a tad over one and nine sixteenths okay so it's that line there okay and again this one is almost touching the number three but like previously if you make a mistake make it smaller make the triangle that you're cutting off smaller than what I've said it won't spoil your project okay so one of the things I don't like about using a trimmer is the underside where you've been cutting because I've been cutting on this side so the underside you get a, a ridge on your paper so what I like to do is I take my uh, bone folder and I just flatten it down like that and it will make that disappear so that's just as smooth as the edges have been cut with the guillotine okay it may not bother you but um, <laughs> I prefer to do it right okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold on our four score lines and your finger is quite enough to do these you don't need a bone folder um, I definitely don't recommend a bone folder because um, this is just DSP and too much pressure on it and it will crack. It will crack the paper, which you don't want. Um, now this is something I'm not fussy about, but you could erase the um, pencil marks if you wanted to. Um, the things that... Uh, oh, I've done this back to front, haven't I? Just a moment often happens when I'm too busy talking. So let's fold that over. Right, okay. Now what you need to do is with the big triangle on your right hand side fold that in and then the opposite one in and we need to put some tape to hold this down. Obviously you can see there's a gap here that doesn't come right the way over likewise there so to make sure that you don't put tape where you don't want it to go if you just lift this up and put a little pencil mark underneath there and a little one under there okay so I know that my tape has got to be the other side of that and I am using red sticky strip we don't sell this anymore and it would probably be easier if I used the fast fuse but it's like everything, old habits die hard. So I'm very carefully going to put that down there. And with my non-stick scissors, we come here. Just going to cut that little triangle off. Put that in my rubbish bin. At least I have a little tray here that I put bits in like this. Yep, that went. I'm going to try to cut that one off. You need another four pieces. I'm just cut into that, didn't I? Never mind, that'll be. Oops, don't you start fighting me. Um, I just cut my piece of uh, DSP where I shouldn't have done, but. Can you see what I've done there? Not really. Oh, yes you can. No, you can. But that's going to be covered up, so it doesn't really matter. Right, the other four pieces, you need a piece, pieces approximately three quarters of an inch long, which I think is about that size. And you need it there. Okay, another piece of the other side. Don't worry about making your sticky strip go to the end and the end this side. As long as it's in the centre, this is going to work beautifully. And then the next one you need, a bit shorter probably, and that goes on this diagonal piece here. 
Okay, let's try this one. Along there. Okay, so they're the five pieces that you need. I'd like to say that I planned using a light colour like this so you could see the tape nice and easily, but I didn't. Just worked out that way. Okay, to stick this down, take this one first. As you noticed, I do just go over this with my finger now. It does help it to come up that much easier. Okay, normally. Right, that's that one. Okay. So then you can stick that one down. And get this one up. This one. This one. Stamping up have brought out um, a normal what I call normal double-sided tape. Uh, I think they're calling it tearing tape. And a lot of people are using that for this this kind of job now. Um, but you don't have to fight with it like that little red bit. It's so static, but with the tearing tape you don't have that. Um, I might go over to it eventually. Right, okay, so just stick that down. Now this is a bit where I said if you make a mistake with where you cut on the trimmer make it that your triangle is smaller rather than bigger because it's better for you to come up higher up here rather than coming down because like this side if you did this too short it wouldn't cover this bit up okay like this it does if you did this too short you'd finish up with a hole there and not the right idea okay so now I'm going to do the tree the stamp set is the sprinkles of, uh, not the, it's sprinkles of life. Um, this is the Stamping Up Ronald McDonald stamp set, which they, the Stamping Up will donate a certain amount from each stamp set sold to the Ronald McDonald charity. Anyway, we're going to be using the leaves and the tree and the bird on this one. Um, as you saw, there are lots of different things that you can use for your um, uh, that feels like the other uh, let's use that that feels like the thicker cardstock that we do. Um, anyway, yes, this is whisper white. Um, I think I was in the middle of saying something there, but never mind. Um, right, the tree I'm going to do in cucumber crush. And when you do this, if you see the punch that we're going to punch this out with, the tree is at the bottom there, so I can stamp it here, just like I did on this one. Um, the tree is this bit here, so I need that on a long, thin bit. So what I'll do is I will stamp that along there and cut that bit off. Um, and the bird is going to be on tip-top taupe anyway. What have I done with my stamps? Right, this is the tree. You don't need to press hard on this. Let's just do this opposite my, no, this side because I need, I'm right handed, I need something to hold on to. Okay, so that's the tree. And for the trunk of the tree, tip top taupe. Which way am I going to put this into my punch? Do it that way, I think. Cut that out, you finish up with a piece to hold on to. Okay. I hope that's not too close. We will find out. And then a little piece of tip top taupe. And I'm going to stamp my bird on that. I could do the bird on white um, so why don't you let's try that see what it looks like in fact let's do both just in case I don't like it okay so there's one on there 
this is going to be a thin piece when I punch it out so I should be able to do that on there let's see I think I've just yes I just put my thumb into my ink right so let's get this punched out okay so the tree trunk and when you're lining this up I find it easiest if you line up the biggest part of the tree trunk that was a bit silly can you see what I'm going to do I'm going to punch right the way through that bird right, let's try again right, as I say if you line up the fat tree trunk first That is easy to get the rest of the tree trunk in there. You see that? Yes. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I cut this a bit too short to do, let's find out. Okay, here's another tip for you then. If you do what I've just done, if you use a removable tape, just make yourself an extra handle by putting that on like that. And then you can punch your bird out. Punch on a little bit short, haven't I? Can you see that? Yep. In fact, let's do this one as well, just in case. There we go. So, did my white bird fly off? No, here it is. So the way I stick my tree on, and when I'm referring to tree, I'm talking about tree top. I put two dimensionals on, and I put them at the bottom, as close to the bottom that I can, like one there, and one like that. Take these off. And then to decide where I want it to go, I put the envelope flap on like that, and then I just bring it over. Don't press down, just have a look at it. Is it straight enough for you? I think so. It's a little bit, but maybe the wind was blowing. Okay, now with this piece, um, don't tip that over. I'm going to use two -way, my two-way glue pen. Bring this back in, which is here. Okay. Now, because you've put dimensionals on your the top of your tree, you may find you have trouble. Uh, getting the branches to go in underneath but that's no problem because you can just pull it back out again and um, cut bits off okay so I'm going to try get that in no, that's not going to go in there so I'm going to cut that piece off I'm going to cut that one off because if any part is going to be seen, it's going to be those out two outer branches. There we go. There we go. Alright, so 
so you can still, still see where you've got the double bit there right so before I decide whether I'm where I'm going to put my bird I put my cherries on and I'm using for that the cherry cobbler dazzling details it's called dazzling details cherry cobbler but um, and a tip about this, I saw, I can't remember who it was, but to store these upside down nice and easily, she uses one of these centers for the um, baker's twine, the thick baker's twine, and it stands in there really nicely. I don't have any empty ones, but that's okay. I don't mind using a full one. It was a very good idea. Okay, so what I do, first one I always try on a piece of scrap paper. just as well because that's coming out of air bubbles that's better let's close that up before I move on otherwise I'll put my elbow into that okay right let's put some cherries up here totally random Oh, that's a big cherry. Right, okay, that looks good. Now, do I want a white bird or a tip top tote bird? That one or that one? I think I prefer the brown one. White. Yes, definitely the brown one. Save you for a later date. Now I need a tiny, tiny piece of dimensional. And I really do mean tiny. That I think will be too big. Let's have a look. Oh no, that's okay. I'll take the backing off. Pick him up with tweezers because I've got to get him in between the cherries. Anywhere. There we go. A nice spot. There we go. So that's how you make these little money bags. Um, I've still got one more to do. I'm going to do it in that colour but not on the video. Um, and ideas for little surprises that you could put in here um, you could put chocolates a gift card one of them the other day I put some golf tees in it which would be a nice little gift for somebody who plays golf um, we also put some seeds packet seeds into one of these when we went over to see my son's girlfriend the other day she did my flowers in the garden um, and hubby had said that he would save some seeds for her so I made the bag and he collected the seeds uh, you could also put tea bag in there, you could use a little sewing kit or a shower cap, the little ones that you get in um, hotel rooms. Absolutely masses of dark ideas, I'm sure you'll probably think of loads yourself. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching my video. If you have any questions, please contact me, I'm always happy to help you. If you've enjoyed watching my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button, which will either be on the right hand side of the screen or below the screen, depends what you're watching the video on. Um, and if you'd like to buy any products, please click on the 24 7 link that's on the screen. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!